What is up, everybody? Dan in the Fireman here. If you are not able to watch the Monday through Friday after action reviews, that is what this video is all about. It's all the videos into one, so you can sit here and watch in one sitting. So with that said, let's go into the first one. happens super quick, but here's the thing. There are some clues out there to let you know, maybe I should not take it this fast that we have more time to react for an escape route, swerving, braking, whatever it is we need to do, especially in the orange stage. We don't want to go into brown stage. We want to stay in yellow and orange stage certain areas of the time, and definitely not want to be in white stage either. So right here, what we have is we have chevrons. Now chevrons are going to be a good indicator that's going to be a sharp turn. So be very careful with that because curves and intersections are extremely deadly for motorcyclists and guess what this is two of them into one so this is the final boss so right here you got the sharp turn so be very careful with that go ahead and slow it down get ready and then you also can't see very well because of this vehicle so remember if you have bad vision you can't see these clues you're kind of screwed so slow it down or let this person go way ahead give yourself a space cushion get in a position to where you can see but that's not what we're going to be talking about today we're going to be talking about the clues that we see out here so, all right so he's going to hit that vehicle but real quick if we were slowing down okay if we were going slow enough or or at least the speed limit okay i think a lot of these guys might be going above the speed limit i can't tell but I mean, you can kind of see a track suit so maybe they invested in some proper safety gear so they could go fast that might be the mentality unsure not going to say that but anyways what we have right here is we do have a right turn and then we have a straight arrow and all these different markings on the road. So these are all the clues for an intersection. Now, I understand, well, you didn't see it until the last second, and that's the problem. We're going a little bit too fast. So if we're going a little bit slower or the speed limit, like I mentioned, we'll be able to see these ahead of time and we'll be able to react with proper speed, proper distance, proper everything. Uh, another thing is you can kind of tell right here the side of the vehicle. It's a little blurry here, but our vision should be pretty good. We need to be checking on our vision, double checking, you know, with the doctor, making sure we can ride within our limits. But if you can see the side of a vehicle, that is a definite pattern for an intersection. The problem in this accident here is that it is a curve, so very bad line of sight. You can't see around the blind turn with traffic. And then also an intersection. So it's, it's just like the worst situation overall. But the problem is we can't be going this fast, okay? So the solution for all of this is to slow it down, especially on curves that we can't see. Use the clues like the chevrons and all the arrows and you see the sides of vehicles. It's like, this is a intersection and a curve. Oh crap, this is not good. So how about we slow it down, go into orange stage, get ready to brake. So cover those front brakes, get ready to swerve. So you're ready to do something high alert. And once you exit this area, Go back to yellow stage, enjoy your ride, and zone in. Once again, it's almost like a non-issue where there's no real problem here, but here's the thing. A lot of motorcyclists get upset, start having road rage. A lot of car drivers get upset having road rage. We just need to relax and we need to actually see these things happen ahead of time so that they won't be close calls and they definitely won't be road rage incidents. So we're gonna move forward a little bit. He has his speedo blurred out. But I'm not, I, I don't care too much about that. Uh, and the reason why is because the car right here is actually going to be picking up speed and going about the same speed as the motorcyclist. And the motorcyclist is in a good lane position. And this is what's going to happen here. So he's going forward, going forward, going forward, using a quad lock, not a rock form. It's all right. You know, code Dan Dan 25. Anyways, you see how the vehicle is just kind of maintaining everything right there. Okay, so we're technically in their blind spot. We're off to the side. It doesn't matter if you're super far to the side or if you're right here. The problem is we're in that dead zone, basically. So once you start seeing that there is an on-ramp coming in, and in your peripheral, see that there's a vehicle right here, and it's just kind of maintaining your path of travel and speed with you, just take a quick look and be like, okay, well, I'm kind of at this weird angle. Let me go ahead and just roll off the throttle a little bit and scoot back. 
while that vehicle can keep going and then just get an idea of what's going to happen because right here this car is making a choice right now it's not made a solidified choice it's still making a choice do i want to get in this lane do i want to get in this lane do i want to get in this lane and guess what we don't know what their choice is yet so i like to get myself away from people that haven't made a choice now they will make a choice when they actually get in the lane and then they're staying that lane and then they start using indicators to move over so right away though right here they haven't made one yet so we're gonna be watching, we're watching corner of the eye, corner of the eye, okay, perfect. I think this guy might be in this position, you know, okay, maybe he made a choice in this lane. We're in a blind spot still, and that's where the problem really lies, is that maybe he still is making a choice, but we're in the blind spot, so we can't be seen. That's, that's as simple as that. So that's why I say roll off the throttle until they make a choice, because who knows, he could still be going into our lane. And I think that is what happens. Now, this is a scary spot because now you're boxed in. You can't swerve left. Or maybe right now you might be able to, but you couldn't earlier. So this is why I say roll off the throttle. Rolling off the throttle one, two, three, four, five miles per hour slower is going to open up a space cushion. It's going to make it to where nobody's going to be around you. Maybe upset the person behind you, but they're going to switch lanes. Not a big deal. So that's why I like to roll out the throttle, accelerate, and get back to speed. Roll out the throttle when something happens, get back to speed. Switch lanes, do whatever you have to do to get away from all these landmines. But he handled it pretty well. He go ahead and roll up throttle, apply a little bit of brake pressure, and then he's gonna go ahead and put his hand up and shake his head a little bit. Not a big deal. He didn't race up, punch mirrors, do all these dumb things because he was a smart rider. Part of the smart rider principles is teaching and mentoring other riders. But here's the thing, guys. How about we advocate for riders too? How about we help out other riders by not doing hooligan crazy stuff that is going to put a bad image on us? Maybe this person right here never interacted with a motorcyclist, and this is the first interaction. And what happens if we punch their mirror? Now the next motorcyclist they see, they don't give a crap about and possibly hit us and just like, screw you type of thing. We don't want that, okay? So be good riders. Be smart riders do something like this nice and easy watch out for oncoming traffic pay attention you know merging and everything wait for them to make a decision roll throttle accelerate we're on badass bikes we're having a good time we can go fast if we want not a big deal and be done with it Brilliant. So this car kind of came out of nowhere and it's pretty scary, but you know, how do we prevent that? Now there's some things that you should be doing in this area, okay? So you should have a certain level of paranoia and it sounds pretty counterintuitive to motorcycling. You know, I don't want to be paranoid while riding. Well, there's sometimes you kind of have to be and this is one of those areas. So I talk about the awareness code chart, white stages, you're pretty much sleeping, okay? You're zoned out, you're just not even paying attention, you don't know how you got here type of thing. Yellow stage, you're zoned in and you're paying attention, you're just kind of scanning but you're relaxed. You know, you're like, okay, I'm in a safe area but I still need to scan for possible potholes or something like that. Orange stage really needs to be picking up in this area is where we are downtown, multiple hazards, too much information. I don't have enough brain power to focus on absolutely everything. And this is where you need to start picking out specific target hazards and cars are target hazards. And then you need to learn the clues like brake lights, intersections, patterns, side of the vehicles, all those things. Red stage, you are acting, there was a hazard, you're gonna swerve, progressive brake, emergency brake, whatever it is, but you're gonna do it well. Brown stage, you pretty much just poop yourself. Anyways, now that we know that, let's move on to this, and we see right here, we see some little green, okay? So there's, there's an intersection. Uh, just based off of that, you should be in orange stage, but based off of the fact that I have a car here, there's an intersection there, we have a bunch of cars here, I'm gonna be in orange stage anyways. Good line of sight, this is the position that I would be in. So you see how you can see the car in front, the car in front of that car, the car in front of that car, the car in front of that car. Very good positioning, this is where I would be. So moving forward right here, we're gonna go ahead and lane filter. Now one of the problems with lane filtering is you do reduce your escape paths left or right. So you really only have acceleration or deceleration and you really only have braking basically. So you can't swerve. So that's one of the big problems, but you do reduce a potential problem getting rear-ended. So there's pros and cons to it. And so make sure you choose what pros and cons you wanna use for that situation involved. So moving forward a little bit more, you see the pattern right there. You see the side of the vehicle. That's what I'm talking about. What's the difference between all these vehicles on your screen right now 
in that vehicle. You can see the sides of the windows. You can see the door handles. You can see the door itself. You can see the natural or not natural. You can see the design shaped of the compartment for all the people in there. Okay, so that right there is, is what you need to be looking for. That is that scary pattern because that right there means somebody can do this in front of you. And that's not what you want to do. You typically see this, you know, the front of the vehicle. They're going straight. You see the behinds of the vehicle like this vehicle. And that's typical. You can even see vehicles, the back of them when they're parked like this. So that's typical. But that right there is what you need to burn into your brain. This is the familiarity checklist. This is the, the thing where you're actually, okay, I see this. Now I'm going to start finding it out there on the road. This is what I want you guys to be doing. So when you see that, be very careful. Be like, I'm going to wait for this person to make a choice. What are you going to do? Are you stopped or are you going to move? Are you stopped or are you going to move? And they're still moving. But back there, since I'm asking those questions, are you going to stop or are you going to move? Stop or are you going to move? I'm reaching for that front brake. I'm getting ready to brake. I'm rolling off the throttle just a little bit until I get past this intersection, and then I'll go ahead and increase the throttle again. But before I get to it, I want to set myself up for success and going and hauling ass without any type of braking, without any type of rolling off the throttle, without any type of preparatory stage, you're going to be in a lot of trouble and you're not going to have enough reaction time, enough anything to be able to stop in time, guys. That's one of the biggest things here is that we just cannot stop. We just cannot swerve. We just cannot do all these things in a split second like we do if we're playing football and we have to pivot and catch a ball. We can't just do that on a motorcycle. We have to prepare. We have to have a plan. We have to have the playbook you know, before going into this stuff. So make sure you look for those patterns. Make sure you look for all those situations. Go into orange stage. Be prepared to reach for those brakes. Roll off the throttle if you have to coming up to the intersection and then go ahead and increase your throttle on the way out of the intersection. But that's the thing, guys. We need to focus on what's important and then we need to prepare, okay? It's just not gonna happen. You know, we're not gonna just naturally be safe out on the road. That's not how things work. This is a huge fear for states that don't allow lane filtering. Uh, there's only a few states in the United States that does allow it, and then everywhere else in the world you're allowed to, which is kind of weird. Why can't we do it? Anyways, I'm not going to get into that. If you would like to support the channel and look good doing it, go ahead and grab yourself a DDFM crew, a uniform. They are on sale right now on Amazon, so if you have Prime, you're going to get some good shipping. But check it out. Link is in the description and the first comment. I love wearing mine and it's giving a plus 10 to my testosterone. So let's go ahead and jump into this though and talk about what happened. Right off the bat though, I want to just take a look at this image and be as safe as possible. Not 100% safe, but safe as possible. And that really goes into the smart rider system, you know, finding these hazards, you know, seeking out hazardous situations, maintaining your fundamental skills, acquiring personal protective equipment, rescuing other riders with medical training, and then teaching and mentoring other riders. And right away, you didn't acquire any gear, okay? So maybe we have a helmet, but no gloves, no jacket, none of that stuff. Be very, very careful out there because if something does happen that you have zero control over and you cut up your body and you damage your body because you didn't have gear, that's where you're going to start having problems. So the seeking out and recognizing dangerous situations is right here, guys, intersections. We talk about intersections all the time. Maintaining your fundamental physical and mental skills, to be quite honest, is also very important. So right here, in order to seek out hazards, we need to have good line of sight. I can't see around these vehicles. So let's say we didn't even get hit in this, in this video. Like nobody behind us hit us. Let's say this person in front of us backed up. Do we have time? Do we really have time for any of this stuff? Can we move out of the way with our hands off? We're not paying attention. We don't know what the person in front of us is doing. No. So what I would do in this situation just for that right there, I don't want somebody backing up in, to me, and I also don't want somebody hitting me from behind, but for the backing up problem and for the behind problem, I'm going to position myself. I'm going to position myself a little bit better. I'm actually going to move off to the right or the left. Or on the right is actually going to be a little bit easier to do because then I have an actual escape path. If on the left, I'm lane filtering on this, I'm almost sharing the lane if I go in front. So if somebody behind me is not paying attention, hopefully they're going to hit this Ford Explorer, I believe, and not me. Maybe clip me a little bit, but I'd rather have that than get my whole back uh, shattered. So we're going to watch just a little bit more. There's the impact. And that's the scary part. 
okay? That is the real scary part, and that can really damage and hurt you. In some of my videos, we talk about mechanism injury, and that's really bad, but right here, just take a look. Easily could have had a broken back, easily could have had broken legs, arms, everything, but then you also have the road rash, you also have impact uh, injuries to the forearms, to the wrist, because when you fall, you put your hands out, and that's why when you have gloves, especially motorcycle gloves, okay, this is why I tell you guys, get them, you're gonna have impact protection, you have knuckle protection, you're gonna have elbow protection, shoulder protection with the jackets, uh, back protection with the jackets if you get the right stuff, and then you also have motorcycle pants with protection to the hips and knees if you get the ones with the hip inserts, and then boots, and then obviously the helmet. You wanna protect as much as possible if you can't control everything. Now, one thing I tell you guys uh, all the time is we have control of a lot of stuff. In this situation, there was no real control on what that car driver is gonna do. They were gonna hit somebody, they were gonna either hit you or hit the car in front of you. I honestly would rather them hit the car in front of me. That's why I wanna position myself off to the side. I don't want to get hit. I don't want anybody to get hit, but if somebody is going to get hit, I want it to be the big Ford Explorer in the front versus the 500-pound bike and then the 160-pound uh, uh, Dan and the Fireman. Uh, that's what I would rather not get hit. I would rather the car get hit. So, guys, treat it that way, okay? That They can take it. They have airbags. They have seatbelts. They're going to be as safe as possible. We're going to get injured uh, on the minorest of minorest accidents, okay? So position yourself better. Just move off to the side so you have good line of sight so that you have an escape path. And if somebody does act like a dumb dumb, they're gonna hit the car in front of you, hopefully not even touch you. But if they do, it's gonna be minor compared to something like this. Dude! Are you fucking for real? Now, when I say panic and I say, you know, not using your, your brakes properly, here's the thing. When you're in this situation, when you are right here, your body goes to the lowest level of your training. I'm not saying you guys aren't getting training. I'm saying that it's going to go to the lowest level. That's because you haven't practiced it enough. If you think you've practiced it 20 times today or 20 times this week, you need to practice it 40 to 60 times. It's a lot like getting you know, wood for the fire when you're camping. Okay, I got a big bundle of sticks. We're all good for the night. No, go get two to three times more than that. And then trust me, now you're going to have enough for the night. So when it comes to motorcycle riding, if you feel like I got 20 minutes of braking or 20 sessions and 20 drills of braking, let's do 40, let's do 60. Get better. What What's the worst thing that's going to happen? Not much. You know, it's going to be better than what's going to happen in here. And once again, I'm not saying that's what's happening where he didn't get enough training. I'm just saying there's a panic and your body's going to go to the natural level. Okay, so now we're about to right here. Now, this whole time, I would be in yellow stage, okay? I'm kind of zoned in. I, I don't see any natural hazards. I don't see sides of the vehicles. I don't see any patterns. But what I see here is the road is starting to kind of go over this hill, and that's kind of like a blind vertical turn. It's a crest of a hill. It's blind to me. I can barely see. Now I can see. I can see some cars. So now I'm going to go into orange stage because you do have intersections back and forth. And what are the intersections? Driveways. I don't know if any of these people are going to go in a driveway. I'm going to consider it an intersection. So if I see a car, especially if they're coming my way, oncoming traffic, if they're with me, you know, they're going to turn right or left and I can just get out of the way. But path of travel violation is what I'm concerned here. So these vehicles, as soon as I get next to them, orange stage, I'm going to get ready. I'm going to get ready for the brakes. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to see what they're going to do. I'm going to see if they're starting to slow down. I'm going to see if the tires move. I'm going to see the, the indicators go. All those different things. Get ready for it. But then this guy came out of nowhere. Okay, this is definitely going to be a path of travel problem. So right here, you need to start applying those brakes. So what did I say earlier? I said as soon as I see a car, I see a car now. I see the Jeep or whatever the vehicle was with the light on it. So I'm going to go ahead and just reach forward on those brakes. I'm not going to roll off the throttle yet right here. Here, and I'm going to reach for the brakes. Now I'm going to roll off the throttle and start applying some brake pressure. This person has his tires and his body already moving. Those are the patterns that you need to be looking for. So go ahead and start squeezing right here. We don't want to squeeze right there. That's what happens if you squeeze a little too late. And what did I say about the driveways, intersections? There it is, guys. So right here, it's going to be squeezing that front brake, squeeze that front brake with a couple of fingers. Now remember your front brake has a lot of stopping power, 60 to 80% stopping power for the bike. The rear tire and the rear brake will do quite a bit, you know, like 20, you know, 20 to 40%. But once that weight gets that front tire, 
because once you start applying brake pressure, all of you and the bike is gonna start getting on that front tire and compressing that front fork. Once that happens, the more and more weight on that front tire, the more and more braking power you have. So now we're getting closer to 80, 90% stopping power right now. So if you're still pressing hard on that rear brake, it's gonna start losing traction because it doesn't have a lot of friction, a lot of weight, and it's gonna start sliding. And that's exactly what happened right there. That's the fishtail. So when I talk about not practicing enough, this is what I'm talking about. You can't just press the same amount with the right foot and the right hand. You need to squeeze more and more and more and more and more and more until you come to the stop with that front brake. Rear brakes are very important for cruisers too, so still do that, but then start releasing a little bit of that right foot and then that rear brake and squeezing more and more front brake. And the only way you're gonna do that naturally with habit is with practice, practice practice and this is what happened right here this is a high side very dangerous very impact oriented type of crash low sides where you just kind of slide and you're going to have impacts but mostly road rash but this one you're going to get flipped over and then put those hands out this is why we need to have motorcycle protective gear too now this is a single vehicle accident okay this person might have caused it and it's pretty much at fault for being in the path of travel shouldn't have done that but we're the ones that are gonna be hurt. Nothing happened to their car, nothing happened to them, maybe financial if you're able to sue them or whatever it is, but the problem is we got hurt, our, ba our baby got hurt. You know, these, this is not a good day for us. So make sure you wear your gear, make sure you're hyper aware and hyper alert, especially in areas like this with multiple intersections, driveways, intersections, whatever, and practice your braking, practice your swerving, because that could have been an option that you could have done too when you're in red stage. Don't go into brown stage, everybody. Talked about that in the awareness code chart. Anyways, with that said, I hope you guys ride safe, be safe, and hopefully this guy is doing well. Thank you so much for letting me use this footage. We're gonna be better riders because of what happened to you.